Following this meeting of the August 22nd, 2017 meeting of the Mayor and Commissioners of the Town of Rising Sun to order. Town Administrator, may I have a ro roll call, please? Commissioner Arthurleaf? Here. Commissioner Braun? Here. Vice Mayor Warnick? Here. Let the record reflect that all the elected officials are in attendance with the exception of Commissioner Pearson, who has an excused absence, and Mayor Marion, who has an excused absence. He excused himself, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so with that, uh, Pledge of Allegiance. All rise, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, I'd like to hold a moment of silence for all those um, recent attacks against officers, all those officers that have put themselves in harm's way, as well as uh, those in the Barcelona and uh, Cambrils area, as well as other areas that have been recently attacked by uh, terrorism and uh, um, all those in harm's way. Okay. Town Administrator, do we have any public presentations? No. Do we have any business meeting items? No. Okay. Do we have any citizens input? I'm going to say probably not. Uh, staff report, so. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for the blank sheet of paper. Chief, do you have a staff report? Yes, I do. Good evening, Mr. Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Um, for the period of August 9th through the 22nd, we responded to 239 calls for service. The officers and myself used 40 hours of vacation. We had eight hours of training. During that time period, we uh, took reports for two possession of drugs, one first degree assault, a theft, malicious destruction of property. Um, two arrests were made for possession of heroin. One was made for possession, one was made for theft from a motor vehicle, one for disorderly conduct, um, two arrests for fugitive warrants, and one arrest pro, for a fugitive from another area. In the traffic enforcement, 24 stops were made along Main Street, two on Queen Street, six on Mount Street, one on Pearl Street, and six on the other roads around town. Um, as a follow-up to previous meetings, uh, Commissioner Pearson wanted me to pass along that the Fire and EMS Appreciation Breakfast is now scheduled for Friday the 13th of October at uh, Ford's Funeral Home Banquet Hall. With that being said, that is my report, unless there's any questions. You said October 13th? Yes, sir. He, did he say uh, what time he was going to start? Um, typically, it starts at 8 a.m., um, but I, I'd have to confirm those times. Okay. Thank you. Town Administrator, do you have a report? Um, yeah, I have a short one. I'd like to take the opportunity to showcase um, what some of our employees have been doing. Um, as you're aware, during the budget process, um, we spoke about purchasing equipment that would enable our employees to be able to expand upon the, uh, the responsibilities, but more importantly, the, to tap into the skills that they have to do uh, some street repairing, sidewalk repairs, storm drain repairs, et cetera. So we used the money that we would normally be spending on uh, contractors and we purchased some equipment. And the first one you're seeing here is a mini excavator um, that we purchased, and this is being used up in the Brian's Grace development to take care of some um, collapsing stormwater drains. Um, this is always interesting when you talk about the collapsing stormwater drains, 
because this is another development where the developer um, basically skipped their responsibilities in the construction project and there's really nothing um, that the town can do about that. So we are uh, faced with repairing things that should not be breaking down as quickly as they are. This clearly is not the first storm drain that we've had to repair in the Bryant's Grace development. But at least we're getting equipment that's allowing our personnel to be able to move uh, and get out there a lot quicker and do it more efficiently. Here you um, see the picture of them. You know, they've, they've removed the grading off the top and they're in the process of rebuilding the walls of the stormwater drain in order to cement that all in and then put the grates on top of it. Um, the picture doesn't completely show, but you see some of the equipment that we purchased in the past, in addition to that uh, mini excavator, um, is that dump trailer off to your, that you see off to the left on the picture. Um, in this year's budget, we also picked up a couple of used um, construction trailers that allow us to haul of all of that equipment. As you guys know, when we've had issues in the past, we were shuttling employees back and forth to drive and pick up different pieces of equipment. And so the mobilization was excessively long to deal with an issue. And then unfortunately, it could be two, three o'clock in the morning, it's been raining all night or in, in a bad snowstorm. And these guys, after they're done fixing something and getting everybody's water turned back on, they might have another hour and a half to two hours of cleanup just getting the equipment out of there. So one of the things we did is invest in trailers that allow some of this equipment, like the mini excavator, the, the little uh, skid loader that we have, the roller, um, and some other things all to be put up on a single trailer, a single trailer in some cases and, and double trailers in other cases. So it's, it helps them be much more efficient in what they are doing. Um, here is a picture of the new um, uh, vibrating roller that we picked up for them. This roller, if you remember a couple months ago, I showed you the picture of the roller that they rented from a local contractor to do the repairs on Wilson. Our roller is actually bigger than the one that the contractor has been using. So you will see in the weekly reports that we are beginning to distribute to you again, you'll be able to see the areas of uh, potholes and blacktop that they're now able to effectively get in and repair. I was asked by a commissioner earlier um, about, you know, what was my impression of the way the Public Works employees were embracing this new equipment. Not only the new equipment, but if you recall, we decided to outsource the grass cutting this year. And I can tell you that the employees are actually very enthused about it. Um, they, they feel much more productive. The example I gave is especially with all the rain we've had over the last couple of weeks, months really, that if you get three days in a week's time where it's nice and sunny to do something, our guys no longer have to worry about taking up one of those days that they could be uh, fixing blacktop or doing sidewalks but in the past they couldn't do it because they had to catch up on high grass growing in the parks because it was raining all the time. So not only does it make their jobs much more efficient, it's also um, making them a lot more effective at being able to do more work um, in repairing our roads and sidewalks. So that's one thing I wanted to um, highlight you on. Um, the other thing is from a building inspection standpoint, we are generating a lot of building permits right now. I've always said you can see when the economy is getting a little bit better, just basically that people are now, some people are getting in a position where they can start to invest in their homes. So we have seen probably about 25 or so solar panel installations in the last uh, 12 months or so, we probably are getting 
maybe seven to eight HVAC system replacements where people are now in a position to invest in upgrading their HVAC units, which is good to some degree because the units that are being produced now are much more efficient than the units that were produced 10, 15, 20 years ago. So there's a double uh, benefit uh, to residents on that. Um, the we're also starting to see an uptick in people that are interested in doing things with their properties that may or may not require special exceptions and variances. Um, so that's another positive sign of things turning around economically um, for the community. This past Thursday on August 17th, um, we conducted an orientation meeting with the Board of Appeals. Um, the Board of Appeals doesn't get a chance to meet very often, and we have essentially five of the board members have all but one of them has been replaced with new faces, so we wanted to get them together to know, get to know each other and also to vote the officers in for the next year. And Bernie Chiamento, we all recognize Bernie Chiamento as having been a past I believe planning commission member way back in the day, and I believe he served two separate stints as a board of commissioner with the town of Rising Sun. So he was now elected to be the chairperson of the board of appeals. A newcomer, Jessica, and I hope I pronounce her name right, uh, Gallatin. Um, she is really enthusiastic about participating in town government, and she was appointed to the Board of Appeals, and she was voted in as the vice chairman of the Board of Appeals. They do have a meeting coming up this uh, coming Monday night, the 28th, to deal with a, uh, a variant or a special exception request for the New Way of Life Church, and the board is very anxious to get going with uh, their duties as a Board of Appeals member. And that really is pretty refreshing because, as you know, we've had a hard time filling positions on that board. Also, a couple of members on both the Planning Commission and the Board of Appeals have fulfilled the uh, requirements and obligations under Maryland state law to have a certain level of training as a member of the Board of Appeals and the Planning Commission. On behalf of the Planning Commission itself, I want to thank Commissioner Warnick, who took a couple hours, and Commissioner Braun, who took a couple hours, I believe it was last Monday night, and sat down with those prospective board members and, and helped them go through the, the modules that you uh, have to take a test on. And so we're starting to see certificates uh, come in. Um, so that, that's a good sign also. Um, from an economic development standpoint, um, the, a reminder that the Dollar General is, uh, the public hearing for the annexation for Dollar General is scheduled on the docket for next Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, the uh, 29th. Um, and that's where the public will have an opportunity to come out and hear the overall proposal of Dollar General to want to annex in the town, and they can uh, render their comments either for, against, or ask any kind of questions that they might have. And that concludes my report. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do we have any, uh, I'm assuming, Historical Preservation Commission report? There isn't one tonight. Uh, do we have any old business? Do we have any new business? I have no business. Okay. Okay. I would like to get a couple of small committees together to look into the feasibility of creating advisory committees. An advisory committee could assist the electric, elective body. It could bring citizens' views to the elective body and it could provide expertise in certain areas without incurring expenses. To begin looking into this, I am looking for people that are interested in insurance and or finance. This would be people in the insurance business that have experience or expertise in that area 
or people in finance that would have a banking uh, background, investments, accounting. Uh, if anyone is interested in getting together to discuss the possibility of a forming an advisory committee in these areas, I would ask that they call town hall and leave your name and telephone number and I would get back to them and we could discuss this. In, in, in this regard, and uh, for these two committees, we would ask for our residents and also non-residents from the outlying areas. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and go into commissioner's comments. Commissioner Rothenry. OK. Calvin, can you put um, the picture of me <coughs> and that police officer up? Uh, well, Calvin's looking for that. I have a, you can, you can turn that one around. That's, That's a nice one. That's Lieutenant Governor, actually. Turn that one around. Uh, just to um, back on what Commissioner was saying before about, you know, what's happened with our police officers out in other states lately. This summer I was down in my uh, hometown of Abingdon, Virginia. It's about 460 miles from here. And I was down visiting some relatives, a little mini vacation. And I stopped into the police department there. And Chief Peterson put together a little package uh, for me to give to those guys uh, some of our, um, our cups and coffee cups and uh, also a couple of things that police officers like to trade. So this is a picture of me and uh, Officer Tate modeling mm -hmm. uh, one of our love, I Love Rising Sun t-shirts. Um, and it's, it was pretty amazing to see the police station, the police station there that was one time in a building about the size of our old town hall now being a, a big building the size of our current town hall. So just kind of wanted to share that um, as we, you know, but you can see the stuff on the chairs behind. We donated some book bags also for them to give to needy kids there. Um, so just wanted to show, you know, that while we've been commissioners, we haven't just stuck to the Cecil County area. We've promoted the town outside of here. We promoted very heavily this year at the Maryland Municipal League Conference. We had a strong showing of the, the whole board, including all the commissioners, the mayor, the chief, uh, and our town administrator this summer. So we're really, as we're trying to build economic development for the community, this board has been out there outside of the community outside of the state getting the name of rising sun out there um, so just wanted to kind of share that with you uh, the other picture Calvin if you want to show it because it was just uh, this summer we all I think this was early spring the whole board attended an event that uh, Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford was in Chesapeake City and we went and talked to him about we thanked him for what the governor had done for us with the grant money. We also explained to him our situation with our sewer plant, and we still have work to do there. And um, we had a we we had a good time with him. We actually had his undivided attention for a little while, and we kind of encircled him, and everybody had an opportunity to speak with him. And we, Calvin was uh, able to explain to him in some detail what we've been doing with our sewer plant and. This administration, Governor Hogan and uh, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, have been very interested in what's going on in Cecil County and have been up this year not just to as an obligatory visit, but to actually come up and see what's happening and how, he can, how they can help. So just wanted to share that too. Um, one other thing on a couple other things tonight. Um, on the water project that we haven't had a lot to talk about lately, but tonight um, I do have the pleasure of announcing that uh, August 31st, we are going to be entering the bid phase for our Chester water line, which is going to be uh, a great boost to this town. It's going to give us uh, a dependability on water that we didn't have in the past when we would have drought conditions, uh, everybody trying to pull off the same underground well. <coughs> Uh, we, we wound up in uh, with a shortage. So this is going to be a big boost for the town, and we're a significant milestone closer to that happening. 
we've actually finally got the approval of MDE to move forward with the bids. And as of right now, the bid phase will start August 31st. And we have some other dates that we'll share as they're more concrete going forward. But um, we hope that we will have a groundbreaking ceremony near the end of September, early October, and by that time also be announcing uh, the winner of the bids and notice to proceed. So one other thing I wanted to talk about tonight because we've got some more good news um, for those of you in the audience. Uh, we showed this back um, uh, earlier this uh, winter spring. The mayor had a Saturday meet and greet event that we put on um, for those who normally couldn't come out. And one of the things we talked about that day was this yellow line is the Octoraro Railroad bed through the town of Rising Sun. And for a few years now, uh, Commissioner Warnick and myself, during our time on the planning board, had talked about turning this into a walking and bicycle path. And this year, I talked to our town administrator and said, hey, let's, let's talk to the county and, and make this happen. We spoke with uh, Commissioner Schneckenberger, who's our local representative. He was on board with it and supported it. And we just recently got, uh, just this past week, email that uh, the county is moving forward. They're looking to uh, find the meets and bounds and description of the uh, property and move forward with the trans um, transfer. And this would be from Route 274 to 272 initially. Uh, this would fall into a lot of our parks and recreation, which would be another long job for Commissioner Warnick. And between him and Calvin Wright and Grants, there's a lot of money out there for rails to trails. And we hope that with the success of this, it can eventually be extended down to the Susquehanna and meet up with the trails um, coming out of Port Deposit. And this would be a great boost to the town of Rising Sun. A lot of us get out and walk for exercise and health benefits, and we do it looking over our shoulder uh, for traffic at the intersections and all. So this would be a great place for you know uh, people to go and walk without having to worry about traffic. We also um, would be able to do much other things with this in the future, but to start with, we want to we want to make it happen. And it looks like now, with the work of our town administrator, myself, and Commissioner Warnick, uh, that it's going to happen. So we get it transferred over, and then start doing the design, and and hopefully we'll be breaking ground on this in the very near future too. Um, so that's, that's something I'm very happy about, and um, I think that's all I have tonight. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Alton Reed. Commissioner Brown, do you have an update? I don't. Okay. Um, I've got a few things on my update tonight. Uh, Calvin, if you can pull up some of those pictures. There's also a couple videos there that are kind of neat. So we've had a, a lot going on in the parks obviously um, and, uh, and I'm going to get into a little bit more detail on that and I, I appreciate you uh, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Alton Reese's help with with getting that advance because we've been you know kind of um, stalled a couple times and I think you had some opportunities while dealing with some of the discussions on water so <clears throat> this is actually um, a section of the stream I actually have kind of a this is before the rainstorm so uh, this is actually some of the new features within the stream design. As you can see, it's a nice little tranquil waterfall. You can close that one. And there's another video right next to it. Oh, that didn't really play right. Uh, there's. Will those logs stay in place, Dave? They will. They, they don't have to worry about them washing away. They're, in they're actually formed in a V-shaped pattern. I don't understand why I was not playing, but they're in a V-shaped pattern that's actually pointed upstream. So as water comes down, it, it, it you know, they're pushed into the bank. It's so it's designed. Design. And the, the point of those logs are actually to channel the stream back to the center. So during a flood event, and I don't know why the video is not playing, but we actually had a flood event this weekend in the park. Um, and it didn't leave the banks of the 
stream bed restoration. So the good news is all that work being done there, especially down by the uh, culvert down at Hopewell Road, seems to be paying off in that we didn't have the level of flooding we would normally expect for the kind of rainfall we had. So um, kind of excited about that. I, Calvin, I'm not, it's not playing, I'm not worried about it. Okay. It was, um, we have some pictures that kind of show the same thing. So if you can open up, there's uh, three folders there. One is park or parks. Go yeah. ahead and open that one. I see the parks. You want me to start at pictures? Start, start at parks, yeah. At 817 or all the pictures that are in here? Um, just go ahead and start with them and I'll <clears throat> kind of have you go through them. Right. So just various pictures of the work going on. And you can actually see there in the center that those two logs, there's like a V pattern there in the center with a little bit of water. That's actually two of the logs. Yeah, right there. That's actually that log formation. There's going to be four of those in the stream bed. From I ask you, did they do just one? They did four of them, actually. And one of the reasons that it's located there is because they wanted to channel the water back to the center for the, uh, the bridge so that we don't have erosion under the bridge. And that helps reduce the erosion under the bridge. <clears throat> so... Were they able to do this work without taking the bridge out? They've, they've worked around the bridge. Yeah. Yep. So right there, you can kind of see how it you know, forces the water back to the center. Um, the, tow the tow wood's a little further upstream, and I, they haven't done a whole lot. They've only done one section of tow wood so far. I do have pictures of that, but um, I I'm trying to remember the actual term for this. But you can see now with the stream flowing again, it's actually not very much of a drop there. The second one's a little more of a drop, but they, they do have like a nice little waterfall sound to them. So it's kind of neat because uh, we'll have four places along the stream where you'll have something of a sound of water running over those logs. <clears throat> um, so, and there's some of these pictures you'll see kind of with the stream drained down and with the stream filled back up. And you, you can see how it's a nice clean shot down to the culverts now. So it's, it's definitely made a difference with the flow of the water. Uh, that pond right there at that V is about two feet deep. So. There's some pretty deep areas for the kids to play in right there near the bridge. Um, upstream a little ways, there's actually an area that's really deep, probably closer to three foot. So where the project starts. <clears throat> uh, they've kind of skipped over a section and they're now working the other end of the project and working their way back down. So this is actually all the way to the other end. They cleared out some of the woods there to the right. Uh, a lot of that was um, green briar, or, I'm sorry, uh, multi-floral rose, which is an invasive species. So we're happy to have a lot of that removed. And actually right here is some of that tow wood section. So you can see it's a uh, curvature, or actually right there. You see, you can see the logs into it and then they use the stumps and everything to create reinforcement into the bank. Have you seen the heron? Uh, we haven't seen the heron recently, but we have, uh, we've had a hawk that was eating fish the other day. Uh, the one day they um, drained the stream down, they had uh, like a salamander, a two-foot eel, a snake, a snapping turtle, a whole bunch of stuff, and they just kind of stuck it all in the one little area. So they might have had like a little death match in that area afterwards. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I'm not sure what the food chain is snapping between turtle, a snapping yeah. turtle, a salamander, <laughs> yeah, salamander, an eel, and a snake. I'm, I'm just not sure the, the order of the food chain on that one, but I'm, I'm sure it wasn't necessarily good for at least one of them, maybe two or three of them. Um, so, you know, these are just various pictures of the work as it's going on. Uh, the pumps... There's a couple of different pumps here. You'll see this is actually dirty water, and that one they pump uh, just out into the grass to allow it to kind of drain back in clean. The other line that's running up further is actually a clean water line, so that pumps the stream around while they're working. So it's a pretty neat process. It's, um, you know, if any of, anybody wants to go over and see what's going on, you know, I've, uh, if they're working, just try not to get around everybody bulldozer, so that's all they ask. But, uh, you know, it, if you, you want me to go over and join you for any of the tour of it, I'm more than happy to. <clears throat> so, um, actually, if you want to close this and pull up the flood pictures real quick. So we have had our first flood event in the middle of construction, which we were a little concerned about the damage it might do. And it, it actually, uh, everything survived pretty well. Wow. Um, it's actually kind of interesting because it, being it's now wider, it actually channels it a lot better. And the before where it was so narrow, it would easily go out of the banks and up into the park. Now it's got more room in that channel to go down through there. 
didn't erode the um, the sides. The I banks. was I really thought that was gonna be the case. They did a pretty good job of stabilizing it so that they didn't get a lot of erosion. That's a lot of water. It was a lot of water. So, um, and it's you know it's it wow. And right there is where uh, that one channel comes out of the woods. Is that the one <clears> that comes <throat> down from like our public works building? Correct. You showed me? Yep. Yeah. So. That's a and that's also where that bridge will be built here soon. So it, it was good to see that it wasn't up in, you know, with incursions into where the bridge is going yeah. eventually. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where we're at on, on uh, the park project. Uh, wow. Some interesting news. Um, as of Friday, uh, the bids were uh, reviewed for the remainder of the project, and the bid was um, the low bidder was Ecotone and which uh, Ecotone has been really good to work with. So um, they're more than qualified to complete the project. And uh, as a result, we're moving uh, forward with um, awarding. We actually sent them a, you know, we, we, or, we directed the project manager to send them a letter uh, notifying them that they've been awarded the bid um, as of uh, Friday. So uh, I don't know if, uh, I assume Ecotone knows at this point, but their bid came in the budget for the project for the remainder for remaining section the remaining two sections of the project were uh, for the bio retention 126,000 and for the uh, RSC the the section up behind the public works buildings uh, the retention ponds was uh, 222,000 was for a total budget of 348,000 and their bid came in at 313,000 so they came in um, substantially lower than some of the other bidders. The other bidders, actually, all the other bidders, they came in about a hundred thousand less than any of the other bidders. And uh, Ecotone does a great job. They did the Triangle Dog Park. They're doing all the current work over at Veterans Community Park. So, <clears throat> so we're, um, you know, I'm, I'm not concerned about, you know, that's going to be that their low bid is going to indicate some low quality or something. I, you know, it's their they they're on site. They've already got the equipment deployed, so they know that they can do it at a reduced cost because they don't have to worry about that deployment. Right. So that was part of their their philosophy on it, and um, they uh, they really wanted to work on the remainder of this project. I also had a opportunity to meet with the CEO of Ecotone <clears throat> and discuss some other opportunities within the town uh, that are. Um, pretty promising and uh, pretty exciting and would help the town with uh, some of our RS4 requirements. Um, or MS4, not RS4, I'm thinking RSC. MS4 requirements. And uh, so there's some good opportunities there that I hope to at some point in the future have more information on. Uh, I had a meeting last week with uh, Maryland Department of Natural Resources, our project uh, sponsor. So the um, person from, Kerry Decker from DNR who awarded us the grant uh, she came out to kind of see how things were going as well as uh, to also see some of the other opportunities. We were working on some additional grants at this point. And uh, so we talked about some of those grants. We also went over to the dog park and looked at kind of how that's come along and um, talked about the remainder section, remaining sections of the boardwalk to be completed by the Eagle Scouts. Uh, so they were really happy with the way the dog park looks. It's, it's come out really nice, the plantings and such have come out really well and we've only lost like from that batch of trees we planted last year I think one tree so um, we've done pretty well over there uh, we also talked about some other opportunities uh, possible 15 acres of wetlands that might be able to get an open space grant to acquire as well as um, possibly some open space grants for some other uh, features within the town like a new playground in um, Richardson Park so a lot of different things going on with uh, the parks with uh, DNR with grants uh, we also had a meeting with uh, uh, Brian um, Seep from Center for Watershed Protection, as well as Rupert Rossetti from the Dr. Rivera Watershed Association, Eric Buell from the uh, University of Maryland Extension School, Sea Grant School, uh, and talked about uh, additional grants. Uh, Dr. Rivera Watershed Association is going to actually be the lead on a grant for engineering of a phase two of the project we're doing over at the park. That would include um, some additional stormwater management behind the ball fields to try and reduce some of the flooding to the back end of the ballpark, as well as handle some of the water coming off of the parking lot and the roof of the church. Um, additionally, it would address some of the water coming off of 274, spilling over the sidewalk at the church. Uh, we're also looking at um, 
the whole sub watershed it's a uh, like 15 acres of area that we're looking to treat so um we were actually that storm worked out well the other day i was able to get some good pictures of some of the different areas where water is running on that project so hopefully we we can redirect that water into areas where we can slow it down soak it in um and uh over time continue to reduce that flooding in the park as well as improve the water quality both in stone run and the chesapeake bay so a lot of really exciting things going on uh commissioner or vice mayor i'm sorry i think the trails that you've built back in the woods will also uh connect to the yes the railroad bed too was part of why we we really wanted to get that in there yep. so some of the ones that you've worked on that go behind the the upper stream yep. and then behind the public works current building we can build a trail and steps right up to the, the path there so somebody could walk from the veterans park down the railroad bed and yeah so we're we have a number of eagle scout projects we're working on one is a well we have at the dog park two eagle scout projects to complete the boardwalk over to the learning platform and then transition down into the grass so I uh, met with those Eagle Scouts again Thursday and um, discussed uh, the projects and we're meeting again this Thursday to go over the plans and uh, we're going to try and get the footers in in the next couple months so that um, at least if, if the project does wind up going a little bit into the winter time at least we'll have all the work into the ground done before it freezes. Um, so uh, that's exciting. We The trails over at Veterans Park. Uh, we've had a couple discussions both with the CEO of Ecotone and Department of Natural Resources about some different options there to try and reduce the needs for wetlands permits because those uh, permits are quite expensive and I'd rather focus the money on building a boardwalk than applying for wetlands permits because there's certain things we can do that don't require permits and certain things that do. If we do boardwalks we can potentially avoid the permits because they would sit on the surface. So there's some different options there. I'm a little concerned about it being close to the stream washing away, so we're we're trying to come up with some of the best options there. The uh, CEO of Ecotone was is a very big trail proponent, and he was very excited about the potential and and um, had a lot of good ideas, like potentially a suspension bridge. Um, he was very interested in the project, and uh, he was also very interested in the Rails to Trails project. And some he said that sometimes Ecotone gets involved in those sort of projects as a goodwill gesture, they would come out and help us get some of that construction done. So um, there's a, a lot of opportunity there that we're hopefully gonna take advantage of. Um, a, there's actually some other uh, things coming up that I hope to have more information on soon. And um, there's some really good opportunities for the town. I, I, a couple of them I, I aren't quite ready to be discussed yet, but uh, I, um, if they go the way we hope and we've got some really good opportunities with with trails and such around the town recreational amenities so uh, i'm hoping all that works out uh next movies in the park the, the previous movies in the park unfortunately due to uh the very extensive rainstorm that um caused uh flooding in the park we uh, had to cancel the movie because well it was wet everywhere in town so um again we uh, the rain has not been very friendly to us this year for movies in the park, which is pretty typical for movies in the park. Um, we always seem to wind up canceling movies for rain. Uh, the next showing as a result is this Friday. We're going to try it again. Hopefully the weather holds. Uh, that will be Sing at Kilby Cream. The following Friday, we have um, Beauty and the Beast at Richardson Park, and that will be uh, the live action Beauty and the Beast, not the cartoon. And then Two weeks after that, we have um, Star Wars Rogue One. So it's it's going to be a real busy back-to-back uh, back to back on movies in the park. Um, I'm praying that the weather holds because it's it's not been a good year for that. And if uh, we have another rain cancellation, I guess we'll just back-to-back, back, we'll just squeeze them in wherever we can at this point. Uh, all those movies start at 8.30. And like I said, the next one, this coming Friday, the 25th, I believe it is, is at uh, Kilby Cream. So, uh, and then the one the Monday after, I think is, I'm sorry, the Friday after, I believe is uh, September 1st, and that one will be at Richardson Park. And um, so, a lot going on in Parks and Rec. Um, 
We also have uh, a dedication scheduled for, um, uh, I'm sure a lot of folks in, in town remember Reverend Jones from uh, Jane's United Methodist Church. We are doing the dedication of the, uh, of Jones Way on, Reverend Jones Way rather, on um, September 16th. And I think it's at 9 a.m. Um, and to what Commissioner Rothenreath was talking about with the rails to trails, the, uh, we're, in addition to the length of rails to trails he showed on the map, there's also some uh, connections to the parks because two of the parks run immediately adjacent to that rail line. And we'll be able to immediately connect those two parks upon completion of that small section of the rails to trails. Um, there's a, also an opportunity in the future to connect uh, the dog park into that through a combination of uh, parcels of land. Um, then if we can get that trail in, that'll be a really cool trail because it'll run right down through wetlands area and it'll probably take a boardwalk and that's gonna be a, that's a little bit longer term project to complete that. But, um, and then there's uh, some other potential uh, projects neat or closely associated with that, that um, if it all comes together, it'll be, it'll, it'll really be something. So I look forward to, to continuing that. And on that note, uh, I'd actually like to announce my candidacy. I plan to uh, run for re-election for Rising Sun Town Commissioner. Um, I uh, have a lot of projects kind of underway, and I'd like to see those projects through, as well as some of the additional planning phases and uh, hopefully execution. We've gotten a lot done in the last three, about three years. In uh, Veterans Park, we've gotten trails built, bridges built, um, stream bed restoration grant, and uh, in the dog park, we've gotten a learning platform and, and uh, about half the boardwalk completed. And I look forward to completing that section of the boardwalk with the scouts as well as uh, continuing those other sections and, and going out and trying to get those additional grants to do those other things. I also, with the water and sewer situation hopefully being rectified, here soon, I look to aggressively work to uh, uh, bring economic development, particularly to our downtown area, and um, continue the forward motion of the town that we've been working so hard at for the last three years. So, and uh, hopefully if the Citizens Rising Sun will have me back, I, I look forward to continuing work with this board on those projects. And mm -hmm. So, with that, I believe that is uh, everything I have to say tonight. Is there uh, anything else anybody would like to bring up? Uh, we have some announcements on page two. That just uh, We do? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Vice Mayor, the list is not meant to be read completely through. Yeah, we, I'm using it as an opportunity. If people came at attendance, they could get the updated. Gotcha. Steps. So there I are, would hit the highlights. Okay. Well, I'll just read the upcoming meetings, the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, we'll be meeting on August 28th at 6.30 p.m. to discuss PZA case 17-01. Uh, the, there will be a public hearing of this board on August 29th at 7 p.m. to discuss the uh, 401 Telegraph Road annexation. That is the Dollar General uh, parcel. Uh, the next town meeting after that will be September 12th at 7 p.m. here in Town Hall. Um, and then the Planning Commission next meets on September 18th of 2017 at 6.30 p.m. And I believe that's just a general meeting at this point. There's just kind of continue the progress of the planning zone. There's nothing on the right. agenda at this point at this for any point, right. anything specific. Um, I believe we still have, do we still have all of these openings? Yes. Okay, so we still have, uh, we're still looking for citizens of the town to um, consider filling positions on the Planning Commission. There's two positions open on that board. The Board of Zoning Appeals has one position. The Ethics Board uh, is one of those boards I don't think has to be a town citizen necessarily. That is correct. So that one, there's one position open there, and then the Board of Election Judges, there's one position open. And uh, that one's particularly important to get filled since we have an election coming up in October. So if anybody's interested in that. The town has, actually I believe it's two upcoming holidays. Yes. Uh, Labor Day, which is not on here is uh, Monday, September 4th, I believe. 
and then the following holiday after that is Veterans Day, which uh, we will observe as Town Hall on uh, Monday, November 13th, since uh, the 11th, which is normally Veterans Day, falls on a uh, Saturday. Um, and I think we went through all of the other stuff last meeting, so yes. I don't feel the need to go through that necessarily again. And just a reminder, um, town elections are Monday, October 16th and polls are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and voter registration deadline is Friday, September 15th at 5 p.m. and you have to register with the county. Uh, you can actually go on to the state's website and register online pretty quickly. Um, and then the last day to register as a candidate is Friday, September 15th at 6 p.m. and the last day to request an absentee ballot is Friday, October 6th at 5 p.m. and absentee ballots are due on mon by Monday, October 16th uh, at 7.59 p.m. Is there anything else to come before the board tonight? No. Okay. With that, do I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.